The Central Bank of Nigeria recently sent a presentation to Nigerian banks about the e Naira project, revealing more details about its design and operational model. The presentation described how the new currency would be designed and operated. In fact, the report states that the e Naira is a legal tender for the entire country. The report also mentions that it will have non-interest bearing CBDC status, a transaction limit for customers, and a value-based transaction. But that's our main focus on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Now to some economic news, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has retained the monetary policy rate at 11.5%. The CBN governor, Godwin Emifile, disclosed this after the committee's two-day meeting in Abuja on Thursday. It also retains the cash reserve ratio and liquidity ratio at 27.5% and 30% respectively. Now, Nigeria's fall in inflation rate, the 14th Annual Conference of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, e-commerce and taxation, running up major headlines in business Nigeria this week. Take a look. The federal government has said that it is targeting an increase in e-commerce trading from the current market value of $13 billion to about $75 billion by 2025. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Industries, Trade and Investment, Dr. Evelyn Gige, who disclosed this on Tuesday in Abuja at a second national e-commerce roundtable organized by the ministry, noted that e-commerce had grown from 14% in 2019 to 17% in 2020. Tax banks and financial institutions in the country on the need to focus on transformative initiatives that will impact positively on the economy. The vice president said this on Tuesday at the 14th annual banking and finance conference organized by Chattered Institute of Bankers on Nigeria in Abuja. The National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's inflation rate in the month of August 2021 dropped to 17.01% from 17.38% recorded in July 2021. These represent 15th consecutive decline in the rate of inflation recorded in Nigeria. This is according to the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. The latest figure is 0.37% points lower than what it was recorded in the previous month. Meanwhile, on a month-on-month basis, the headline index increased by 1.02% in August 2021. This is 0.909% higher than the rate recorded in July 2021, 0.93%.
Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that within a three-year period covering December 2017 to December 2020, Nigeria generated a total sum of 6.5 trillion naira from non-oil exports. This sum is 5.8 trillion naira lower than its 12.3 trillion naira, $30 billion target set by the federal government under its zero oil plan. In the fourth quarter 2016, Nigeria Promotion Council conceived zero oil plan to increase the contribution of known oil exports to Nigeria's gross domestic product by 20%. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, has written 36 state governors over compliance with audits and recovery of back years of stamp duty. The Minister's Special Assistant and Media and Public Relations, Jubrilu Gundu, made this known in a press statement titled Stamp Duty, No Recoveries Yet, as Malami writes 36 governors issued on Wednesday. According to the statement, recoveries have been conducted for the federal ministries, departments, agencies and financial institutions. And those were the random for this week. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says it is uh, soon to be launched digital currency in Naira will strengthen the stability of the banking system as deposits become more diversified when people are banked. The Central Bank of Nigeria, a digital currency, will also make it easier for the banking system to comply with existing laws such as anti money laundering, customer protection against fraud and ensuring the safety and stability of the payment system. Uh, joining us to discourse uh, all of this right now is Favor Sunano top leader, Planting Coin Africa. Good evening to you, Favor. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Good evening, Justin. Super excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. All right, let us just talk more right now for people who may not ordinarily understand what the e-Naira is. How different is it from cryptocurrency? Well, um, a lot of propositions have been going on around uh, what this e-Naira is all about and how it could really, really uh, change what we already have currently. Now, according to the CBN, uh, as much as I understand, the e-Naira is... Is, it does not replace the current Naira. It uses the same blockchain technology, just like um, Bitcoin, but they say it's not a cryptocurrency. And uh, the truth is the baseline for all cryptocurrency, digital assets is the blockchain. And for the e Naira to be, it needs to have the technology. And I am sure, that the inera has its own blockchain and that is very very good news now it doesn't replace the existing uh, currency we this that we have it is another form of transfer. i need to have a wallet on my mobile phone and an account with a bank that operates that has the inera then i can do transactions is different totally different from what we have today what we have today is called the fiat f-i-a-t currency and the digital e naira is a digital currency that you can use to make payments for goods and services and i must say it's a very laudable creation by the cbn all right you said it is a very laudable uh, from the central bank of nigeria but some some people may want to really know uh, what benefit is e naira you know what benefit will it bring into uh, the regular digital banking system in the country well, the truth is, uh, it allows borderless transactions. Uh, and I want to believe the, the inner, in cryptocurrency, in, in the blockchain space, there are private and public blockchains. And I want to believe the inner uses the private blockchain. And uh, so because of that, uh, they could, it's not totally decentralized. They could actually uh, have some level of control. So for, as far as I'm concerned, uh, whether they, whether we like it or not, money has become totally digital. And for the bank, for the CBN, the APS a bank in the country, to decide to create its own digital currency, it makes the, the banking system in Nigeria way, way ahead of many other countries around the world who have not decided to make, who have not taken a decision 
regarding the use of blockchain technology. It is a big loss for banks in Nigeria and, of course, in Africa. All right, let's try and understand this um, further, you know, just how um, operational it will be in practice. Uh, right now, you've talked about um, the blockchain technology. You talked about wallets now. So what are you saying in earnest is that um, the average Nigerian who have a bank account, who has a bank account, uh, would be required to open some sort of wallet for, for him or her to be able to inoperate this. What about the issue about uh, technology, you know, uh, you know, enlightenment and all of that, would you say that uh, we are ready for this particular technology in the banking sector? Well, I, would, I, was, I don't know how ready the bank is, but definitely just like the days of transition from analog use of data recording to the, to the transition to the point where we now have um, computers, all, all the Fed for starters being computerized. Uh, at one point, it looked like it will never happen, but the transition took place, and there must be a starting point. Right now, the, the, the next thing that will happen is the installation of infrastructure. I don't know how ready it is, but blockchain is an expensive project. Whether it's a country that is using it, whether it's a banking, whether it's, in the, it's a very expensive project, and there will be a lot of education that will go on for the next, I don't know how long, maybe three to five years, but it has to start. Now, uh, digital currencies, according to the guidelines create, created by the central bank, digital currencies are, are divided into two, two classes. We have the central bank digital currencies, which is issued by, uh, and, and is directed by the central bank and the private digital currencies. The central bank issued cu uh, currencies are divided into wholesale CBDC and retail CBDC. Now, uh, also CBDC will be assessed by institutions that hold accounts with central bank and interbank or large value transfers. Now, the retail CBDC, which the entire uh, uh, populace, the, the mass, mass people we, uh, uh, we adopt, uh, is the retail CBDC, which is accessible by the general public, including households and businesses as a means of payment and store of value. Every person will be required to open a, a, a new wallet. It's a wallet, it's wallet based. Everybody will be required to open a new wallet, whether with the bank. I don't know how the, the, the CBI is going to bring it about. I'm, I, I'm sure there will be new entrants into the banking system, new I form of banking that, that we have never seen before. Right now. The, the CBN uh, has said that uh, he, or has planned that it will be operational come uh, 1st of October. You know, that's barely a month ago. And you've talked about uh, infrastructural and um, commitment to be put in place, uh, you know, enlightenment and all of that. Do you see these uh, October take of um, feasible judging by what uh, we have on ground. And uh, would you also say that the central bank has actually carried all the operators along concerning this particular move? Honestly, I don't think it's going to be uh, effective October 1st. I mean, yes, the announcement that we are going to do this is going to come, but if, we, if it's truly blockchain, <laughs> then uh, I don't see that. I, I'm not sure the banks have already, even the existing banks, they're not ready. Uh, infrastructure is not there. That because even building a regular blockchain. I remember my first training in in London, London Blockchain Week in 2017. Uh, I, I I approached the, the experts, those who design blockchains. The very first thing I was told that I have to start to develop the platform. I need a minimum of a million dollars just to start, just another, just the platform alone. We're not talking about training. We're not talking about all those stuff. So the I don't think. I don't think the infrastructure is in place right now. Okay, so, uh, but it's a good way to start. It's an announcement we made. I don't know how prepared the bank, uh, CBN is, or the, the banks are. All right, uh, from what we understand concerning um, digital currency, let's talk about Bitcoin and crypto for a bit right now. And for all we know, not too long ago, the central bank uh, came out of the policy, you know, with some sort of uh, regulation or ban on cryptocurrency operation. So far, you operate and planting coin. Uh, tell us how it has been, because some countries are actually uh, using bitcoins as their, you know, legal tender. So how has the, the, the environment of cryptocurrency been specifically in Nigeria since the CBN ban and all of that, specifically the one you deal in?
All right, uh, uh, we lost uh, we lost our favor there again. Okay, so uh, we'll take uh, this. Uh, did you know per se on an on E Naira, and we'll come back and see if we can re-establish contact uh, with um, favor. Stay with us. Right, it's still business insight and plus TV Africa as we wrap up the, the segment on e Naira, let's um, conclude with favor and uh, and see how cryptocurrency has been doing in Nigeria since um, the central bank of Nigeria you know wielded its big stick favor all right so thank you for having me back uh, cryptocurrency is um, blockchain technology is huge now uh, banning cryptocurrency is not the smartest, like, smartest thing to do by any government right now. Um, the, what, what should be done is to look at the, uh, on, look at on the underlying technology, which is the blockchain. With the blockchain technology and with a platform like the CBDC, uh, a country like Nigeria could develop systems that will help us in budgeting, in population, in, uh, like in census, for example. We can use it at uh, birth control. We can use it. anything has to do with data, uh, land registry. We could use it. So, uh, and because we don't have enough infrastructure, even human capital, young people are the best bet for the spread of this technology. The old and tired people will not be ready because it's very blockchain is very cumbersome. It needs sharp minds, people that we take that we that we bring about startups. There are startups that can come with this blockchain technology apart from cryptocurrency. There are startups that can be encouraged, that can bring the, that can bring billions of dollars into this country, that can empower this country. Now, the, the CBN needs to encourage uh, startups around blockchain technology. It's cryptocurrency is thriving, definitely. It, it will thrive because it's borderless. Uh, it's totally peer-to-peer. -peer, you know? So uh, I, I have, there have not been any setback yet, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the use of cryptocurrency in Nigeria. Actually, we are top we are top two users of cryptocurrency in the world right now, even with the so-called ban of the CBN. I, I, I believe CBN needs to find a way to embrace the stakeholders of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology in Nigeria, in Africa, and even in diaspora. All right. If they do that, I'm sure that uh, there will be a lot of progress for the country. All right, thank you so much, I'm Favor Sunano, for joining us and sharing insight on the e and, of course, on cryptocurrency and the way forward in Nigeria. We do appreciate your time. All right, uh, for e Naira project to be successful, a good number of Nigerians, including companies and government agencies, will have to maintain e-wallets. Nevertheless, e Naira will be uh, troubled by some of the current issues of the country, including illiteracy, lack of power, lack of internet coverage, and the volatility of the Nigerian currency. 
As we go on the show, the House of Representatives Committee on Public Account recently partnered with the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the Lagos Mainland District of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria to organize a national workshop on the Auditor General's queries and the ABC of responses. Would we'll leave you with the highlights of that. See you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. In an audit, queries address issues where the Auditor General needs further clarifications to erase doubts and address disagreements. The queries may also be the questions asked by the Auditor General during an investigation to gather information to conclude an audit. The key issues in responding to Auditor General's queries and the fundamentals of technology innovations and compliance initiatives at the major discuss in this workshop. They have nothing to do with the... The Auditor General audits all governments pending every year by carrying out interim and annual audits as well as ad hoc examinations when the need arises. Key members from the National Assembly and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria speak on the need for the provision of answers to these queries. As of chief executive officers to be alive to their responsibilities in terms of uh, rendition of audited accounts to the Auditor General for the Federation for uh, his comments and subsequent uh, report which is expected to be laid before the floor of the House and of the Senate. Uh, what it's meant, this workshop is meant to do is to look at the uh, work of the auditor and the audit query holistically. Audit queries um, is a phenomenon in the Nigerian environment, so to say, in the sense that um, every now and then the Auditor General for the Federation encounters issues, sometimes unexpectable issues. Delegates speak on the plans for their respective organizations after this workshop. Yes, I think it's, um, it's trying to drive the culture of financial, regular financial reporting, reliability of accounting reporting from the MDAs. A useful one, considering that when we prepare, we are accountable for whatever the government has given to us. The workshop is meant to help in closing the technical operational gaps brought about by the introduction of emerging technology disruptions and of course, the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic.